Hello everyone and welcome to this short reflection coming from Kalin Parish Mans. The light of the world has come. Jesus is the light of the world. The light shines in the darkness. The darkness will never overcome it. Amen. Well folks, this is my second last reflection before I retire. And that got me thinking about what is important. And I remembered Billy Graham, I think it was, near the end of his life giving an interview. And he was asking what advice he would give other people in the faith. And he said, keep the main thing, the main thing. What a challenging message. Keep the main thing, the main thing. So what is the main thing in the Christian faith? Well, of course, we call it the Christian faith because it relates to the Christ, which is a Greek word that translates the Hebrew word for Messiah. And here's the great mystery and wonder of it all, that Jesus of Nazareth, we claim, is the Christ. We tend to think of Christ as being a name, you know, Jesus Christ, but it's not a surname, it's a title, Jesus the Christ. And what is amazing is that within the first two decades, within the first 20 years after the death of Jesus, Jesus and Christ became synonymous so that Paul could just talk about Christ or Christ Jesus or Jesus Christ. They became interchangeable. And that's at the heart of the faith, that Jesus of Nazareth is the Christ of God. That's why we are Christians. But at the heart of this message is an understanding that God has done something wonderful and special and particular in and through Jesus Christ. That the kingdom came with him. It has come. It's not here in all its fullness. It's here in embryonic form. But it's here in a way that we can see and grasp. But only if we're given the gift of faith to be able to apprehend that. There's a wonderful passage in scripture in John chapter 3. The first eight verses. Look it up for yourself. Here is an encounter between Jesus and Nicodemus. Nicodemus was a Pharisee. He was part of the, the ruling body in Jerusalem, an educated man indeed in the faith. And he comes to Jesus and of course he, he uh, obviously sees Jesus as a teacher accredited by God as he says. But Jesus confronts him and challenges him, not so much confronts him but challenges him right away that unless a person is born again they cannot see the kingdom of God. And of course, Nicodemus is puzzled by this. But it's obvious from the passage that Jesus is talking about spiritual birth. And the phrase can mean born again or born from above. And the two go together. We don't need to choose between these. Born again and born from above. Just as we are born physically, we need to be born spiritually to apprehend what God has done and is doing in, through Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Saviour. Now, the language of being born again is scary to many people. We in Britain often associate it with American evangelicals and we might cringe at that or it, we might find it ourselves being a bit uneasy with that type of language. Or perhaps we've met someone who was kind of full on in the faith and that was intimidating and they were going on about being born again. And that's unfortunate because in one sense we cannot be a Christian unless we're born again. And I think many folk in our churches are born again, they just don't use that language and don't think of it that way. Think of it, let's get away from the born again language and talk about awakening in the spirit because that again comes through, if you read the passage in John chapter 3, verses 1 to 8, what comes through is that it's the work of the Holy Spirit. 
awakening us to who Jesus is. And it's that awakening that can start the journey of faith or even renew it. Where are we in our journey of faith? Every one of us is different. Our level of understanding is different. Think of the disciples. They began probably as just curious observers of this guy, Jesus, who seemed to be some kind of teacher. And then they thought, well, maybe he's a rabbi. And especially when they called, he called them to follow him. That's what rabbis did. And they probably thought that they were going to get some special in instruction. And then they probably began to think, well, oh, there's more to this guy than we realised. He's some kind of prophet as well. And then finally they understood that he was the Messiah, the Christ. Although they had their own view of what the Messiah should be, so they had to relearn all of that as well. So it was a roller coaster of a journey of discovery for them. And it began by following Jesus. So maybe we need to renew our commitment today to follow Jesus because he is at the heart of the faith. Many people believe in God or a God without necessarily being involved in the church or even describing themselves as Christian. But if we claim the mantle of the Christian faith, that involves following the master, learning from him. And in that, we need the spirit to awaken us to who he really is and what this kingdom of God is all about and what is our role in not only experiencing that, but sharing that, being followers of Jesus in this world because he left the church as his agent in the world. That's you and me. So that's a, an incredible challenge for each and every one of us. And the question is, where are we on the journey? It's not just about having a light bulb moment and then that's it all over. It's a process. In fact, we can have many light bulb moments. I don't know about you, but my journey has been in fits and starts. Sometimes I'm, I, everything's high and it's wonderful and it's great and I, I'm there. And other times I'm quite low and it's been a punctuated process of my life. And sometimes I need revigorated and I need to, to remember what God has done in my life in the past and what he can continue to do in the future. So we're all different, different personalities with different experiences. But the important thing is, are we open to God challenging us, changing us, renewing our faith so that we can serve him in this life? We all have a ministry. My ministry as a professional clergyman is coming to an end. I'm about to retire. But ministry is bigger than the clergy. Every Christian has a ministry. And when every Christian works together within the church, the church benefits from that and then becomes an effective vehicle for representing the Christ in our world. So there's a wee challenge. Keep the main thing the main thing. Who is Jesus to you? And what is Jesus saying to you regarding what your contribution can be to the work of his kingdom and his church here and now. Now, a while ago, we shared with our church uh, a little card, just said forward in faith, and there's a little prayer on it. Lord Jesus Christ, I give you this day. Walk with me along the way. A very simple message. Lord Jesus Christ, I give you this day. Walk with me along the way. May that be our prayer in these coming days, a simple prayer. But remember, when we pray, God can deliver. And in that delivery, he may be calling us to challenges and responsibilities. But then that's the whole point of being a follower of the Christ. Once again, thank you for watching and listening. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all this coming week. Amen.